And we're back up to the start for the student women's eights in the Island Challenge Cup. You know, University of Texas, USA up against Oxford Brooks University C. So we saw the, the kind of Brook C crew win yesterday. Being Syracuse, another American university, coming up again, the University of Texas, which is a, a definitely much more formidable for force this season. As they came sixth, sixth place at the NCAAs, which is back in May. taking the moment to appreciate uh, the coxswains there calling to their team. They're attached to microphones and, um, and speakers that are at the feet of the athletes. So that will be the only thing that they hear aside from the blood pumping in their ears. The adrenaline of the first 30 seconds has probably worn off now. And now you're starting to feel that lactic acid in your legs and you need to shift down into your race pace and doing it with um, gradually, but it does look like the crew from Oxford Brooks trying not to settle yet. They need to stay in contention. They need to keep that contact. And interestingly, in these two boats here racing each other today, Abby Dawson in the Texas boat and Darcy Wynne Jones in the Brooks uh, boat, they were both Lee alumni and they raced together in the Diamond Jubilee quad last year that made it to the quarters and now they're racing one another in the Island Challenge Cup. That's pretty cool, the different universities have gone off to. One stayed local, one took the opportunity to go to America. <laughs> Those big hatchet blades going in about four meters long, bending, although we can't see that on our screen right now, but if you're to take a still frame, that carbon fiber would actually be slightly bending as the pressure on the face of the blade gets translated all the way to the feet. You can see it's nice and flat through this section of the course, still following conditions, and perhaps that tail breeze is just starting to lull a little bit through these last few races. The time's not quite as fast as some of those records that we saw falling earlier this morning. But nice and flat, pretty forgiving, quick conditions out there. Yeah, it's definitely still fast, but nowhere near as quick as it was first thing this morning when that wind was blowing a gale up the course. The Longhorns there, you know, doing a really good job, you know, dictating the race, got out early, and taking complete control of this one. But you can still see the Cox making sure she gets everything out of her athletes. Yeah, the Cox, Carly, there, laser focused in on her stroke seat, calling to her and the rest of the of the team. There's often another extra level of conversation happening between the Cox and the stroke. The stroke feeling the rhythm behind her, telling the Cox what she needs, and vice versa. The Cox calling to the stroke, time to go, wind it up. Just when you were kind of racing in the eight, just bring that to life. You know, with the role of a Cox and the coach. You know, when the kind of pre-race conversation is going on, how would that dynamic work? What, you know, what's your best experience of that? I think a Cox is pure and simple an athlete, and although she doesn't have an, he or she doesn't have an oar in their hand, they are a huge driving force down the course because it's not just prescriptive of what we're going to say. I'm going to say these words at 500 meters. It's about what needs to call and then what works are going, what calls are going to work for you specifically. Um, they're a huge part of the conversations off the water in terms of what words we use and how she's going to get the best boat send out of the athletes as she could possibly can. Still in control of this race, it is the University of Texas, USA. With just slightly clear water over Oxford Brooks University C. That shot there showing us how the athletes are going out around the pin. A little bit of a wobble if you're not directly level. The bodies are going to be staying um, straight. Your hips are going to be straight with the balance of the boat is actually just all in the hands and the handle height that the athletes are going around the pin with. And you can see from that image the wires on the riggers that it looks like they've kept their biomechanical um, 
but um yeah, so the biomech actually is really interesting, especially for those of us who love to nerd out on the technical. That's going to show us our power application. Uh, that will show us what our power curve is, because what we want to do is be as close to the same power curve as possible. W would you want that on in racing, though? This is the question. You, know, you, you train with it on. Surely come race and you get that stuff off because all that work's already done. I'll let every crew make their own decision, <laughs> but for me, it's the same as emptying out the water bottle. It's extra weight. Yeah. Yeah. Leave it behind. <laughs> it's a very diplomatic answer there, Andrea. But they're coming down to the line. It is the University of Texas in the lead over Oxford Brooks University C. Yesterday they beat Syracuse from the USA to make it through to this round, but they're going to lose to another American crew, it looks like, as they're coming across the line. Here it is the University of Texas, USA, taking the Island Challenge Cup over Oxford Brooks University C. They look good. Take tradition speaks to the sportsmanship